All right, can you keep a secret? Maybe you can, even though research may say otherwise. Some studies suggest that only about half the people can keep the secrets they were told. But let's hope you're in the other half. Another question. Can your apps keep secrets as good as you can? My name is Yakov, and you're watching The Swift Bird, a channel about software and tech, maybe birds too. Today, I'd like to talk to you about security in iOS apps. Software security is a pretty broad topic, so the focus of this video will be on secrets management. It's not a secret that likes on YouTube are very important almost as important as software security. So if you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'll get to this video's topic in a second, but first, an important disclaimer. I'm not a software security expert. I've just been developing software for the past five years and it involved analyzing competitors and following the industry's best practices. So if you are working on a mission critical product with hundreds of thousands or maybe millions monthly active users, which I have, you should have dedicated security people on your team, which we did. However, not being a security expert doesn't mean that you, the engineer, cannot or should not do your best to make your software as secure as possible. Just as if you're not a UX designer doesn't mean you shouldn't care about the user experience. Maybe I'll revisit the UX topic in a separate video. Just keep in mind that there are more sophisticated ways to compromise your app's security than I can cover in this video. From timing attacks to reverse engineering to holes in the operating system. If you're interested to learn more about them, let me know in the comments. I can do additional research and maybe talk with some people. Now getting back to secrets management. Let's start with the very definition of the secret in an app. Basically, secrets in software are much like secrets in real life. These are pieces of sensitive information that you don't want everyone to know. The reasons for the secrecy may differ, but in general, this information gives you a certain advantage or enables you to do something that no one else can. Secrets in software specifically usually refer to various passwords and password-like things. API keys that you use to connect uh, to different services, session tokens, certificates, maybe passphrases to unlock those certificates, and so on. The advantages you get from keeping these things private are pretty clear. In many cases, they are the exact reason your app can do what it promises and has any kind of value to its users. And the dangers of leaking these secrets range from increased operating costs to intercepted communication to legal trouble. Probably the least consequence you can deal with is spending more on third-party services, such as cloud computing, push notifications, and others. If someone stole the token that you use for those third-party services, they can run their own tests at your expense. For example, launch a copy of ChatGPT or video streaming service. Not ideal, right? A much worse thing is the broken trust of your users. If someone's targeting you, your app, or your company directly, they may have bigger plans than just getting a free ride paid for with your money. They may use the stolen credentials to damage your reputation, like send insults in push notifications or simply break your database. And finally, what will certainly become a nightmare is a data leak. Your users have entrusted their data to you and you are responsible for guarding it, often in the legal sense too. In some countries, the company's executive can even go to prison for not protecting the customer's data well enough, especially when you take into account how much of unneeded data companies collect and hold on to. I'll make a separate video on privacy-oriented software design. In my opinion, it's one of the most important topics, which is ironically often overlooked. So definitely subscribe to the Swift Bird. Now that you have a sense of what may happen if you don't take software security seriously, let's have a look at some of the most common mistakes in iOS apps specifically. One of the most discussed sources of uh, vulnerabilities is secrets in source control systems. See, when you're developing an app and need to have an MVP as quickly as possible, it's really convenient to have everything within reach. 
So you might be tempted to put an API key in the source file. It's totally fine to do so, as long as it's not a production key and you have a clear way to distinguish between the keys. Ideally, you shouldn't have access to production keys during development at all, because it doesn't take much time for the secret to get accidentally checked into Git. You know that Git keeps all the changes, so there isn't a guaranteed way to remove the secret from the history. At that point, you should consider it spoiled once and for all. But wait, what if I'm working on a pet project and no one's gonna see its source code besides me? Well, I can't keep you from taking that risk, but I don't recommend committing any sort of secrets to Git, even in personal projects. There's at least one more reason against doing so, and I'll get back to it later in this video. If sorting credentials in the repo is a bad approach, what's a good one? If you google this question and read the results, many suggestions will include tips about using Xcode build configuration files and injecting secrets at build time. If you're not familiar, Xcode lets you use separate build configurations for production, development, staging and every other environment you might use in your project. Basically, these are sets of environment variables for different, well, environments. Many continuous integration services such as GitHub Actions allow you to store sensitive information in a secure way and reference it within CI workflows. So when you're developing an app, you can use the development configuration and even check this file into source control. And when it's time to ship the app, the CI will create or update the production config and populate it with the secrets. That way, you don't have to worry about how many people have access to the secrets during development, because the answer is zero, and the secrets are only retrieved by the script. Looks like a solution, right? Wrong. Even though you don't have to worry about who has access to the secrets, what you do have to worry about is where these secrets end up once they are injected. As their name suggests, build configurations in Xcode are used during build time. That means whatever's inside gets copied into the build app, specifically the info.plist file. These plist files are stored inside app bundles as is, in the plain text form. They aren't even baked into the binary. The reason for that is that these files are primarily used by the operating system to retrieve the very basic info about the app, such as its name, icon image and supported OS versions. But for you that means that anyone interested can download the IPA archive from the App Store and find all the secrets inside. Just last week I was asked to have a look at an app and suggest some improvements. It was mostly about the interface and user experience, but uh, I went a step further and also looked inside the IPA. What I found there was impressive. The plist file gave out all the sensitive stuff such as API keys for third-party services. I was kinda shocked and uh, notified the developer right away, so hopefully this hole will be fixed in the next update. You might ask me, if build configs aren't fit for storing secrets, what are they even good for? And if you looked at the app I was analyzing, which I won't name for security reasons, you'd find the answer. Besides the secret keys, uh, the plist file contained host names for the app's API endpoints, so, totally makes sense. You use the development endpoint to prevent any harm to the real data if you mess something up during development. And the shipped app connects to the production endpoint. As a side note, even if the secrets had been embedded in the binary itself, it would still have been possible to retrieve them with a tool such as strings. As you just saw, there isn't a foolproof way to store any sensitive information inside the app. Can you then send the secrets to the device over the internet instead of shipping them with a copy of the app? On the surface, doing so would solve two problems at once. First, you don't leave a chance to steal the secrets from the app bundle. And second, you can change them whenever you need without updating the app. By the way, the lack of flexibility in updating the secrets is another major problem with storing them inside a version control system. Sending secrets over the network is definitely a better and more flexible way to manage them. You should consider, however, that the network traffic can be intercepted. There are different ways uh, to do that. There's even an app that you install directly on the device and it just shows you everything sent over the network. 
By the way, I'll be heavily using that app in the video about privacy, so definitely subscribe and stay tuned. You can protect against eavesdropping by pinning the certificates your server uses to communicate with the app. Pinning certificates, or in certain cases just their keys, makes the app inspect every request and reject those whose authenticity raises any questions. In other words, if someone's sitting in the middle between your app and the server, you'll be able to learn about that and decide what to do. There is even a more sophisticated technique called Mutual TLS or MTLS, which requires that not just the server, but also the app itself presents a valid and trusted certificate. In that case, not only the app makes sure that the server is genuine, but also the server verifies that the app is authentic and allowed to connect. This is a somewhat extreme approach, and most importantly, it presents the very same problems you wanted to solve with pinning. Namely, you need a passphrase to use the client certificate. And that passphrase has to get to the app somehow. You can read more about pinning and MTLS at the links in the description. It's important to know though that pinning is a viable option only when you can guarantee that the certificate on the server won't change at any moment. But what if you can't guarantee that? Or what if you don't even have the backend of your own? Here comes the final tip. When building iOS, Apple made sure it left a way, and in fact several ways, to securely communicate with the device. A good illustration is the Find My service. If someone could steal an iPhone and just block the request from Apple, what point would it be in such a protection? You as a developer can also benefit from those channels of communication, because the request sent over them cannot be read or modified by traffic inspection tools. One of the solutions I can recommend is the on-demand resources. These are additional content files which your app can request from Apple when needed. You can store virtually anything that way. The exception is executable code files. The resources are hosted by Apple the same way your app is. And when the app requests a resources bundle, it'll be downloaded over the secure channel. There's a simpler solution, which is especially suitable for small amounts of data, such as passwords or tokens. It is push notifications. That's right. I suggest transferring the sensitive data using push notifications, but not the kind of notifications you're used to. These are what's called user notifications, and I'm talking about remote notifications, the underlying technology. Remote notifications are also known as silent pushes or background updates. When working with them, you don't need to ask for permission from the user because you don't display anything on the screen. With remote notifications, you have a way to push the secrets nearly in real time. One more way to go about delivering secrets to the app is by using CloudKit. It's an Apple service which lets you host a database, exchange updates with the app and even subscribe the changes in the data. And uh, importantly, all that happens over a secure channel. Personally, I haven't worked with CloudKit much, but uh, I'll make sure to give you some good articles about it in the description. Alright, is that all you need to know about managing secrets to do it securely and efficiently? I don't think so. So far I've only talked about technical solutions, but there is a more important aspect. It is designing the system from the ground up to limit the potential damage. The app I analyzed surprised me not because it had secrets in the easily accessible file, but uh, because it had the shared, or also known as master keys, in the first place. When building a system, the best thing you can do is make sure that every copy is as isolated as possible, so one user cannot cause problems for the others. When you need a token, it had better be a single user, single session token, which can be revoked at any point if the requests start looking suspicious. In that case, you don't even need to think about networking security or certificate pinning that much, because all the user can learn by eavesdropping is only their personal token. So, I suggest that a single app copy never accesses the information which can affect other users. The very final thing in this video is about rotation or the ability to change the secrets whenever you need. Ideally, you should rotate your secrets on a regular basis. And importantly, when you revoke and reissue them, the app shouldn't have any downtime or require an update. I know, it was a lot of information. So here's a short summary. 
don't store any secrets in your repo or in your app and uh, don't use Xcode build configs for injecting secrets because it's the same as storing them in your app. Most importantly, limit the scope of potential damage from a compromised secret to a single user. If you need extra protection, consider a certificate or key pinning. But regardless of whether you use it, never send anything that can affect more than one user over the network. Change your credentials regularly and make sure you can do so without breaking the app. I guess that's all I wanted to share with you today. If you know more tips for secret management, I'd love to read about them in the comments below. Don't make them a secret. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Swift Bird. Stay tuned for more tech stuff and until then, have a great time.